Thank you everyone for joining us for today's webinar, The New Way to Engage Event Attendees with Digital Credentials. My name's Cody, I'm from Credible, and I'll be your host for today. If you're not familiar with Credible, we are the world's leading digital certificate and digital batching software. All right, so maximizing attendee engagement is vital in determining the success of an event. When the focus is on promotion and boosting attendee numbers, the process of engaging attendees during and after the event can end up somewhat neglected. So for event engagement to be successful, attendees need impactful interactions and motivation to continue talking about the event after it's over. Event organizers need solutions for these interactions and tools to help them boost the engagement of their attendees before, during, and after the event. So in this webinar, we will explore the use cases for digital credentials throughout an event, how digital credentials result in increased engagement for events, and why event organizers should utilize digital credentials to motivate their audiences to keep the conversation going after the event is over. And let's begin by answering a, a simple question. What does event engagement currently look like? It, engagement is sort of split into three parts, pre-event, during the event itself, and post-event. And although generally a lot of focus is on pre-event engagement to generate interest, ticket sales, you should never ignore the importance of engagement during and then after the event to ensure the audience is always going to be excited to return to future events. And, you know, you gain additional value from their involvement. So before the event, the goal is to generate interest, excitement, encourage prospective attendees to get involved in discussion and drive traffic to event web pages and sign up for. Social media is a useful tool to drive interest and Often an event will have unique hashtags that organizers, exhibitors, and attendees can use to increase visibility of their involvement. For recurring events, you might enlist the assistance of past attendees and exhibitors to showcase what they enjoyed about the event, maybe what they gained or why they would be attending again. And then during the event, the focus switches to the attendee experience, but that's pretty often left in the hands of exhibitors, presenters, that can lead to, you know, sort of attendees disappearing into the event. So you as the organizer might have little or, or no idea of who or, or what they're engaging with, maybe where they're spending their time, what appeals to and engages that audience the most in the moment. Some organizers are starting to utilize uh, event engagement technology that does allow them to track those metrics and gain a little bit of a better understanding of what was successful about the event and what they can improve or reduce for future events. And of course, engagement shouldn't drop off when the event is over. Post-event engagement is a chance to remain connected, learn what attendees took away from the event, and use those insights to better promote and improve the engagement of future events. Organizers want to keep their event in the minds of attendees, and encouraging post-event engagement is a great way to keep discussions going. Some organizers might send surveys out to their attendees. Others will encourage their attendees to share their favorite moments on social media. If the event takes place annually, uh, some organizers will also use the opportunity to promote early bird tickets for next year's event. So, how do digital credentials improve event engagement and support each stage of the event lifecycle to benefit attendees? Well, let's take a look at the way pre-event engagement can benefit, right? I previously mentioned that social media plays a key part in generating pre-event excitement and interest. Event organizers often send out or provide access to recommended social copy, right? With suggested hashtags, company tags for their attendees and exhibitors to use. And although this is typically a simple copy and paste exercise to social media, you're still relying on attendees to take those steps to generate visibility. Digital credentials can support pre-event organic visibility through 
ease of shareability, right? Limiting the number of steps. So in one click, event attendees, exhibitors can share digital event badges to a preferred social network with preset copy and hashtags to boost the visibility of the event. You as the issuer can choose to send out digital event badges to registered attendees prior to the event and encourage recipients to share directly from the credential delivery email using a, a pretty clear call to action button, right? So the, the, um, the event engagement metric then of digital credentials provide you as the organizer with an easy way to track and measure the reach of shared event badges. And as the recipient's network will often cross over with the target audience of the event, that helps to boost referrals. Additionally, event organizers use digital credentials to issue awards for pre-event contests, such as something like the, the GSV Cup, so the example shown on screen. Those digital badges are issued prior to the conference and widely shared by the contest winners in celebration of their achievement. And then what about during an event? The, the first thing to note is not all events are one day and done, right? Often large events are going to run for several days and motivating attendees to get, across, get involved across multiple days can be tricky. So using digital credentials, you as the event organizer can provide an element of gamification around multi-day event attendance. So creating a series of digital event badges that are awarded for individual day attended and follow up with a formal digital certificate award that's you know, issued for attendees that are evolved across, involved across the entire event. Let's look at engagement during the event starting with check-in. So typically the current check-in process might require attendees to have a printed or scannable code, which in my experience, leads to a last minute scramble to find my entry pass at the point of entry. So obviously that can create hold up at the beginning of event and can cause attendees to miss opening keynote presentations or worst case scenario, lead to attendees being turned away if they can't locate their physical ticket. Replacing printed tickets with a digital event badge streamlines the check-in process by making it quick and easy to retrieve an event badge from a digital wallet card on a smartphone device. Digital event badges added to digital wallet cards are automatically given a scannable barcode that can be used to provide proof of eligibility for entry and prevent any last minute turnaways or delays. And once an attendee is at the event, it can be difficult to track what they do, where they go, and where they gain the most valuable information they sort of become ghosts that seemingly disappear into the corridors and halls of an event space. Technology is available to track attendees' event experience, but it doesn't provide any way to recognize that the attendees have the highest level of engagement. And by extension, it, it doesn't really encourage others to get involved, right? So event organizers that are tracking the activity activities of their attendees, whether that's through QR code check-ins, NFC tracking beacons, attendee surveys, number of book meetings, can use digital credentials to reward their attendees depending on level of engagement. A credible digital credential platform offers an API integration, so you can connect your event solution and set up issuance criteria based on the actions of those attendees. By identifying and rewarding highly engaged attendees. You encourage open discussions to find out where improvements can be made for future events. And this process is also useful to encourage further engagement from attendees that showed lower engagement. The same logic in digital credential awards can be applied and awarded to the highest performing vendors and exhibitors at the event. And then for virtual or hybrid events, engagement awards can be issued to those that are active in the session chat, get involved in Q&A, spend time browsing virtual booths. 
And it, if you're one of the organizations using Zoom to deliver virtual events, we do have a Zoom integration to automatically issue digital badges and certificates to meeting and webinar participants who attend for a preset minimum amount of time. Many events include additional training sessions, boot camps, mentoring, master classes alongside the main event. And that provides another opportunity to reward attendees with digital credentials that showcase the skills and knowledge and experience that the attendee gains. The space made available on the digital credential page also helps to communicate how much time was spent taking part in these supplementary sessions, what topics are getting covered, and what the attendee has to demonstrate in order to earn that credential. But Let's get to one of the prime examples, right? What about engagement after the event is over? Attendees go to these events, they gain knowledge, they make connections, they inquire with relevant service providers, they see industry technology in action and they learn about you know, upcoming services, tech developments for whatever that target sector is. But it can be difficult to see that the event has guaranteed value for those attendees. Depending on the goal of an attendee and the sessions that they've attended during the event, organizers can promote post-event actions by asking attendees to complete challenges that will provide evidence of applied knowledge. Successfully passed challenges can then be awarded with a digital credential that event attendees use to showcase that knowledge, that experience, insight, that they gained from the events to their network and their peers. And that can also help show the value in having attended the event for organizations that might be reluctant to send staff for fear that it could be wasted time or wasted spend. Some event organizers or exhibitors or presenters, present, presenters provide rewards for their attendees such as prize draws or survey giveaways or you know, new social follower raffles. And those typically uh, take place post-event to keep the event relevant uh, in the minds of attendees. Digital credentials awarded for attendance and involvement can be used to provide evidence of engagement and in turn provide access to post-event awards such as discounts on services or tech, access to relevant training for free or at a discount, and entry into those kinds of prize draws or sweepstakes. And this helps to keep the event in the minds of attendees and promote discussion even after the event has finished. Where an event utilizes traditional entry tickets or passes once an event attendee has received a badge or pass and used it to gain access to the event, they're, they're put on a shelf, right? They're filed away in a drawer. They're simply thrown away into the trash. But digital credentials, in retrospect, are hosted on a dedicated credential page that allows for more detailed information than a typical event pass, like details of the event, the organizer, relevant skills that were gained, those digital event badges continue to exist after the event has passed. Using digital event badges in place of traditional event tickets increases the value of that event pass and provides a reference for what knowledge or skills or insights were gained through that event, which can lead to attendees' LinkedIn profile being strengthened and even strengthen their employment portfolio. So organizers utilizing digital badges and credentials from a credible benefit from a per unique recipient pricing format as well. What that means is each attendee can earn multiple badges or credentials during an event and the cost to the organizer or the issuing organization for the unique it is related to the unique attendee email address rather than per credential issue. So if I attended an event and I got three credentials for registering, speaking, and then attending multiple sessions, 
that counts as one credit rather than three in a credibles model. Additionally, we don't charge for design or have a limit on the number of designs. So the amount of credentials you can generate and give to somebody inside of an event to gamify the experience is unlimited. So you can recognize and represent attendance, speakers, engagement with credentials without any additional cost. All right, then how do you as event organizers track the reach and engagement of physical event badges? More often than not, you, you might not do that at all. Being able to track what recipients do after they have received a physical event badge or lanyard generally requires a, a large further spend on smart materials and tracking stations throughout the area. You know, the, the time that you have to spend surveying recipients on what they're doing with their badge and you know, ways to assess how much interest was generated through recipients talking about their badge. Digital credentials simplify the process with dedicated dashboards for tracking how many recipients open, engage, and share their credentials, where they share them to, and how they're being engaged with online. And then analytics dashboards are a great way to track and provide insight into the activities of credential recipients, including how they're engaging with their event credential, uh, where they're sharing it, and how many views it's generating. You as the organizer can take analytics tracking even further with things like influencer metrics that would allow you to identify influential credential recipients that are essentially the ones generating the most interest and reach by sharing those credentials. So one of the examples here on the, the left side of the, the image shows that off a little bit. You will be able to see how many views your top performers are driving so you can better identify and engage with those individuals. So to summarize, you as event organizers benefit from the use of cost-effective digital credentials to engage attendees before, during, and after an event. You gain increased visibility by encouraging attendees to share their event credentials to show social networks, to save time on things like check-in by allowing attendees to carry and present their event credentials on their smartphone. And you motivate attendees to get involved by rewarding participation. The versatility of digital credentials and space provided on the dedicated credential page enables you as the organizer to create and deliver credentials that effectively communicate their own value. And this means that whether the credential is issued to attendees or vendors or exhibitors, volunteers, speakers, or any other third party that views the credential is going to understand what it represents and why it's valuable. And the use of digital credentials helps to keep the conversation going even after the event's over through the issuance of post-event digital credentials that are shared and discussed on social media. And then finally, every credential issued is easily tracked from the pretty convenient analytics dashboard that enables organizers to see where credentials are shared and how much engagement they're truly generating. That was a lot. So now we'll open things up to your questions. The first one I have here is from an anonymous, um, basically do, um, does the digital wallet work with Apple phones? So if you're issuing a, a credential that can go into a digital wallet, which everything at Credible can, the answer is yes it will be something that can function regardless of whether it's uh, a, an Apple wallet or an Android wallet. And we, we have instructions on how you can, you know, double check that type of stuff. Uh, but if you do wanna see that in action, let me know. And I, I would need you to send in your uh, actual email just because you posted the Q&A as anonymous. And I'll, I'll get somebody to give you a little bit of a demo of that. All right, next question I have here is from Jeff. 
Okay. Essentially, we have sessions with over 5,000 people. Um, how, how do we go about issuing those credentials? So it's, it's more a question of volume than anything else. I, I've done issuance for some events. So we, we partner with uh, ASU GSB specifically, um, and they're, they're going to have their annual conference about a month from now. And we issue credentials to their event attendees, uh, and we sort of participate in the process with them. I found with their list, which in some cases for virtual event attendee credentials would be more than 30,000 uh, recipients, uploading is really easy. So just taking that list wherever it lives and uploading it to a credible was seamless for me. But if you want to set up something that's uh, more consistent or, or sort of ongoing, more automated, you know, we, we integrate with a lot of other platforms. We have an API you can leverage, or if you're running events through Zoom, we do have that Zoom integration that I mentioned. But yeah, for, for any really big list, the, the 5,000 or the 30,000 that I mentioned, it's it's easy to just import into a credible platform. So that 30,000 I should mention too, when it comes to importing and generating credentials, you, you really just hit the import, double check some of the, the work or whether or not it throws any errors on the import that are going to tell you maybe there's bad data somewhere. And then you're automatically issuing those credentials and sending the credential emails to those people as well. So for those sessions that you have with those 5,000 people, when you do that upload, uh, you can also automatically make sure those 5,000 are going to get issued to the people and 5,000 emails get sent out so that those people receive their credentials and take whatever action you've written out as the, the CTA inside that email. All right, next question here is from Caroline. Do you have an API with, I think that's Path LMS or, or Blue Sky? So our, our API is open. We can essentially connect it to anything. And if you need help with that, we, we have some availability to, to try and assist with, you know, making sure that we can connect with whatever you want to connect to. We've done a lot with internal and standard solutions. So whether it's something that only exists for your company as an event solution, or it's something that exists everywhere, chances are we can build something for you if we don't have it yet. We also have a pretty extensive Zapier library. So if that's one of the things you're already using or you're interested in you know, not involving a developer if you don't have to, chances are whatever tool you're using, we can probably connect through Zapier if we don't have something built for it already and you don't want to use the API. All right, next question we have here. Okay, this, this one's from Andrew. How many designs they should create for an event, which I think is, is really interesting to talk about. So we've, we've seen people that want to do you know, one design for each separate award they want to have. And we've seen that sort of spiral out of control. So what instead we want people to be able to do with Credible, and one of the reasons why we built it the way that we have is the ability to create dynamic templates through the use of what we call attributes. So if you are running an event, you want to have participation awards, or you want to have some sort of speaking awards for somebody and let's say you want to include something simple like a person's name on the badge or what speaking session they attended or the specific award that they're going to be given has a different name depending on what they've done. Those things don't have to be separate designs. The, the name is dynamic and it's going to get pulled from a credible in the database that you upload because it's, it's a name, it's an attribute that's going to get pulled in and put into a space that you define and you set whether it, it wraps or it expands at all and so that it's always going to fit right where you want it. And that also applies to things like the name of the session that you want to reward somebody for, the, the type of uh, participation they had, whether it was speaking or volunteering or, or what have you. Each of those things works better as a custom attribute where you can have one design and send out 17 different types of credentials for an event because of effective use of custom attributes. 
So it's dynamically pulling in the text that you want to have on that badge or that credential because of what you're uploading, because of what you have in your list. So while we can have unlimited numbers of designs, and as you go along, you have different events with different branding for each event, you may want to change what the design looks like and you may want to have a new design. Credible is built to make it so that you don't have a heavy lift there and you really can just set up a couple of templatized designs and then use custom attributes to make those really customized. Thank you for joining us. If you want to learn more about the benefit of digital credentials, you can join us in any of our future webinars uh, or head over to our website, that's accredible.com, download any of our existing resources. Also remember, you can get in touch with our team, our experts at any time from our website, or you can go there and sign up for a trial account of our software. And that trial is gonna give you everything that you need to test out Credible. Thank you again, everyone, and have a great day.